Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy the 20th chapter. Here in Israel united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. So let's get back to the scriptures. Um, today's topic, come on computer. All right, trials in the last days, all right? Not gonna be long. I just wanna hit some key points as we get ready for uh, Bishop's class to come on. All right, so trials in the last days. Um, Losias, give me uh, Deuteronomy 31. And we start at verse 24. All right, I'll let everybody get their uh, Bibles out. Your notebooks, your pens, pads, all that good stuff. All right, and then we'll begin. All right. Let me know when you get that. Actually, hey, start off at um First Corinthians seven thirty five real quick. Start there. All right. All right. Because what did we had this quarantine? We got all these different things that try to get us distracted and try to get our minds off of what's really important, okay, in this captivity. Uh, whether it be TV, I hope y'all brothers ain't watching TV like that. That's a distraction. That's a distraction, all right? Wh whatever it may be, there's always distractions out there. You got to stay focused, okay? Uh, read this. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7 and verse 35. Watch this. And this I speak for your own profit, mm -hmm. not that I may cast a snare upon you. Come on. But for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Right. We have to attend upon the Lord without distraction. Without distraction is easier said than done, right? All right. We got to stay focused on the task at hand. Brothers, what is the task at hand? What are we supposed to be doing throughout this time in our captivity? Okay, there's a hand right there, Jasher. All right, pass in the mic, please. Should be a mic in the audience. What you got? Hey, Shalom. Uh, Isaiah 49 and 6, raising up the uh, tribes of Israel. Uh, No. If you ain't right, how could you raise somebody up? So how, what should you be focusing on, brothers? What is the task at hand? You got you to gotta focus on this before you can get to that point. Let me hear Soldier Aaron in the back. You got a mic, right? Hey, Shalom, leadership, most High Christ bless. Shalom. Um, you need to be focused on getting yourself right and getting your house right first. Uh, all right. Uh, I need a scripture. Uh, second Edris, chapter 3. Uh, 14 verse 13 all right let's read it let's read that all right that ain't the one i want so if somebody got uh something else raise your hand read that though the book of second ezra chapter 14 and verse 13 mm -hmm. now therefore set thine house in order do what set thine house in order all right aaron since you called the scripture walk me through setting your house in order all right so the scripture saying turn his mic up please Testing, testing. All right, go ahead. All right, so when it says get your house in order, you need to get yourself right. Uh, make sure you you're doing what you're supposed to do because you can't lead anybody if you're if you're being a hypocrite yourself. All right, I've learned that we don't break things down to the nitty gritty because somebody could say, "Hey, you need to do what's right. You need to stop doing that and do the right thing." Our people don't know what the hell you're talking about. 
So, so I need somebody to break that down. Read it again. Somebody else break that down for us. Verse 13. Come on. Now, therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. Set thine house in order. What's that going into? I want you to break it down. All hands should be up. Otherwise, you're doomed. You're not going to make it. Brother Malachi, you raised your hand, right? All right, go ahead. Go ahead. It's right there. Oh, he, um, shalom, leadership. Shalom, shalom. When he's saying set your house in order to me and get yourself together. Break this down for me. I don't want you to be general or vague. Meaning like keeping the commandments. There you go. That's important because an a Israelite, no, a Jake ain't going to understand that. What else? What else goes into uh, getting your house in order? Get your wife in order and get your kids in order. Get your wife in order and get your kids in order. On order with what? The most high. With more, in order with the most high's laws. That's exactly right, Brother Malachi. Very good. All right, anybody have another scripture? Uh, Brother James had one. Hey, shalom, leadership. Hey, shalom. Um, I had 2 Corinthians, the one in 2 Corinthians, uh, was it 5, 13 and 5? 13 and 5. All right, let's read that. Let's read that. That's a good one. 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. Examine yourselves. Do what? Examine yourselves. According to what? What do we examine ourselves according to, uh, Brother James? Examine ourselves according to the scriptures. The laws. There you go. Yes, according sir. to the laws. That's, that's spot on. All right, so give me an example on how you can examine yourself according to the scriptures. Um, the one I like to go to is... Uh, um, Leviticus nineteen seventeen. Um, if you're not loving your brother, uh, it, it, it's hard to love your brother as you love yourself, especially for us being in this truth. Um, it, it's hard. To, it's hard to keep that commandment. So that's a hard commandment for us. That's correct. Now you got to also look at um, marriage, right? Yes, you got to look at marriage. Um, am I living uh, a life according to the scriptures? I may say one thing, but is my household at home? Are they on track? Yes, okay, something else, brothers. I want y'all to be interactive because I think we've been missing the mark. Uh, you on security. So it's one of these brothers I'm looking at. Tell me if y'all, hey, back there, Brother Stefan, let me hear you. Hey, Shalom Leadership. Most shalom, high shalom. Uh, what I got is Jeremiah uh, 29, 25. I mean, Jeremiah 29 and verse 5. All right. You got Jeremiah 29 and 5. Why are you bringing this one out? Uh, because in our captivity while we're here, uh, these are the things that we're supposed to do. And also uh, verse 6 says, take ye wives and begat sons and daughters. So it's saying while we're in this captivity, we should still be building on each other and producing a nation while we're still here. Yes, that's good. That's good. Somebody give me one more. I want personal development about your spiritual development. Go ahead, Simon. Uh, shalom, leadership. Shalom. Uh, the, uh, Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 12. Okay, let's, well, no, 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 no. Personal development. That's good to have mentorship and guidance, be continued with a godly man, but I want personal development, something that you have to do, something that another man can't do for you. Oh, uh, Philippians 2 and 12. Okay, read that. Now, I want you to break it down now. You got to remain uh, standing up and break it down for all of us. The book of Philippians, the book of Philippians, chapter two and verse twelve. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sir. So, uh, like uh, he, Paul said, he said, um, uh, you know, that we should obey the commandments even more. Uh, now that the, the times that we're living in, he said, not only in, our, in, the, uh, in the presence, you know what I'm saying, of the body, because when we around each other, you know what I'm saying, it's easy for, you know what I'm saying, for us to, you know, appear like everything good. You're right. You ain't lying about that, bro. This is, um, this walk is not easy, okay? This walk is not easy. We are going to have our ups. We're going to have our downs. We're going to have our good times, sorrowful times. But the key is to do what, brothers? We got to do what? Keep enduring, keep enduring. Let's say you failed some trials, right? All right, you failed them. Is that the end of you? No, no, no. You got to get yourself up. You got to get yourself up, get yourself right so you can get back in the fight. You know, think about it like this. Think about you on the battlefield, right? 
you side to side with your brethren, but you get shot in the sho- in the shoulder, and then you get shot in the kneecap, right? Now you fall. You can't really move. You can't move your arm. You can't move your knee. Then they take you to the infirmary, okay? Does that mean that you're out of the fight? No, sir. That just means you're wounded right now, right? Yes, sir. You got to get yourself back into the fight. It means you got to get healed up, right? What's going to heal us? The, the word. You got the scripture I want? All right, what is it? Shalom. Uh, Psalms 107 and verse uh, 20. Okay, let's read that one. Psalms chapter 107 and verse 20. Let's read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 107 and verse 20. Mm -hmm. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Read it again. He sent his word. His what? His word. All right, God sent his word and, and it did what for us? And healed them. And it healed us. Okay, understand, brothers and sisters, the only thing that can heal us and get us back on tracks is the word of God. Okay, give me that in Wisdom of Solomon real quick, man. 16 um, and 12, I believe. Yeah, read that. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. All right, it says, it says there was neither herb or mollifying plaster that restored them to health. What is this going into? Who can explain this? James. Uh, shalom leadership. It's mm-hmm. going into uh, the medicines. It's like going into medicines, man. So we all we always got to go back to the root, right? Who created the medicines? God. The Most High created the medicines. Okay. So I want you to read this again. Verse twelve. Come on. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. It's not that. It ain't something that he created because he created it. <laughs> you understand? Okay. Come on. But thy word, O Lord. Which healeth all things. And this goes into you brothers and sisters who may get sick from time to time. All right. Hey, I'm going to tell you straight. That medicine is not going to work if you don't believe that God can heal you. Okay. Understand that thing. That medicine is not going to work if you don't believe that the true healer can actually heal you. Okay. Um, drop that. Now let's get into class real quick. It ain't a, it's not a long topic. We're just going to do a little bit of reading. All right. Um, for those who was on the reading this morning. It kind of got sparked off of that, um, this class. Give me Deuteronomy chapter um, 31. Deuteronomy 31, I want you to start at verse 24. All right, now we're going to get into it. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 24. Come on. And it came to pass when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law Mm -hmm. In a book mm-hmm. until they were finished. Come on. That Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God. Come on. That it may be there for a witness against thee. Watch this. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord. Come on. And how much more after my death? So Moses is telling us what? He's telling us that the children of Israel, when he's dead and gone, they will do what? Say it. They will rebel. They will rebel. Read on. Verse 28. Come on. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears Mm -hmm. and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death, ye will utterly corrupt yourselves Mm -hmm. and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days. When? In the latter days. Brothers and sisters, I don't know if you realize, but we... We are the product of what Moses was talking about right here, okay? It says, evil will befall us in the latter days. We're living in these latter days, okay? Uh, we were watching, um because we got rained out from camp today, we was watching um Atlanta at camp, out at the, um, the protests in downtown Atlanta, bro. Our people are bugged out. We are coming together to, quote, unquote, protest about uh, police brutality against our people, Okay, against the police department or whatever it may be. But as soon as we get out there, the whole crowd says, forget that. Let's attack the Israelites. 
And that's why this is happening to us. I stay, made the comment, I think, last night or whatever. I was like, I just, I was like, we wicked as hell, and we deserve every last bit of what's happening to us. I want you to read this verse again, man. Verse 29. Come on. For I know that after my death, you will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, mm -hmm. and evil will befall you in the latter days. And the reason why the evil came upon us is why? It's because we're stiff-necked and rebellious and will not receive the words of the Lord. Read. Because ye will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger mm -hmm. through the work of your hands. Come on. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. So when our forefathers was listening to that, they was what? They was being stiff necked and being, Moses, you don't know what you're talking about. You know how people get down. Yeah, yeah, Moses. Yeah, we get it. But look at us. We are the children. We are the descendants of our forefathers. Okay, now from there, we're going to read 2 Ezra 14. Uh, we're going to read it for a while, okay, starting at verse 1. 2 Ezra chapter 14 and verse 1, and I'll let you know when to stop. The book of 2 Ezra chapter 14 and verse 1. Come on. And it came to pass upon the third day I sat under an oak, and behold, there came a voice out of a bush over against me mm -hmm. and said, Esdras, Esdras. And I said, Here am I, Lord. And I stood up upon my feet. Then said he unto me, In the bush I did ma manifest, reveal myself unto Moses. All right, so it says, In the bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses. All right? Now, when we just left off from Deuteronomy 31, the song that Moses told, told to the Israelites was the same song that God told him to tell to the Israelites. All right, so Ezra is getting a, a similar encounter. Okay, right here. Read verse 3. Verse 3. Come on. Then said he unto me, in the bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses mm -hmm. and talked with him when my people served in Egypt. Come on. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the Mount of Sinai where I held him by me a long season. Read. And told him many wondrous things and showed him the secrets of the times and the end and commanded him same so he showed moses secrets of the times and he showed him the end the latter days the days that we're living in right now moses already saw what was going to happen to us that's why he said exactly what he said as soon as i die i know you're going to corrupt yourselves because i see it we're just reading we're reading the precept here that god revealed that unto him you with me all right read on verse six these words shall thou declare, and these shall thou hide. Uh -huh. and so some things Moses would declare, and some things he would hide. Later on in the class, we're going to read the book of Daniel. Same thing happened to Daniel. Some things were shut up for that time, but in these last days, Daniel is going to be back in the earth to reveal those mysteries that were shut up. Okay? Come on. Verse 7. And now I say unto thee mm -hmm. that thou lay up in thy heart the signs that I have showed and the dreams that I, thou hast seen and the interpretations which thou hast heard. So it's telling you, like it says in what Deuteronomy 4 and 9, it says, hey, be diligent, take heed, and don't forget the stuff I've showed you. Put that in your heart. Lay that up in your hearts. Come on. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. For thou shalt be taken away from all, and from henceforth thou shalt remain with my son. And with such as be like thee, until the times be ended. For the world hath lost his youth, and the times began to wax old. So it says, the world has lost his youth. Meaning what? It's, going, it's getting closer to the end. Okay, now this was during the time of Ezra the prophet. During the, um, the Persians and the Medes. Okay? This is during that time. Alright, read on. Verse 11. For the world is divided in t into 12 parts. So it says the world's divided into 12 parts. This is simply just a timeline. Okay, read. And the 10 parts of it are gone already. So at the time of Ezra, okay, during the purchase of meat, he said 10 of those 12 parts were already done. So now we live in during the kingdom of Babylon, the United States of America. What part do you think we're in now? Exactly. We're in the latter days. It's almost over. Okay, read. And half of a tenth part, and there remaineth that which is after the half of the tenth part. All right. Um, read on. Read on. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. That's, that's what he was saying at that time. 
He didn't have much time left then. We really don't have that much time now. That's why the Most High, he's not playing with us. He's telling us to get ourselves and our houses in order now. ASAP. Okay, read. Comfort such as them as be in trouble. Uh-huh. And now, renounce corruption. We have to do what? Renounce corruption. We have to renounce corruption. Uh, stop there. Give me Baruch 4 and 28 real quick. Now, brothers, um, I'll give you this word of advice. If it's not working, fix it or change it up, okay? A lot of times, we find ourselves not being successful on a normal basis, Okay, we find ourselves making mistakes or falling into bad situations time and time again. So something in your spirit should be like, you know what? This ain't working for me. So I need to what? I need to change what I'm doing. Watch this. The book of Baruch chapter four and verse 28. Come on. For as it was your mind to go astray from God. Uh -huh. So being returned, seek him 10 times more. Do what? Seek him 10 times more. Meaning what? I can guarantee you, if you create schedules, all right, and I'm talking about schedules you stick by and you have accountability for. If you create schedules that will occupy yourselves in only being in the word of God, doing the work of God, talking to your brothers, talking to your sisters, tell me when we're going to have time to con commit iniquity. You understand that? Because <clears throat> think about it. When we fall, it's because we wasn't going hard enough. That's all it's saying. The reason we fall is because we ain't doing enough. So it says, if you do fall, the next time, if you make it through, go 10 times harder. So with doing so, it's going to do what? It's going to narrow that, that window right there, meaning what? It's going to be hard to sin. It's got to be hard to sin. We got to stop just reading it like it's words on a piece of paper, and we got to apply that thing. Okay? Hey, if you fall... Bruh, don't pity yourself. Sisters, don't pity yourselves. Get back up and do what? Go 10 times harder to the point where, damn, I don't think I could fall this time. That's what you have to do. Otherwise, you ain't going to make it. You're not going to make it because guess what? If you're leaving yourself to idle time, let me see if these brothers are studying. What does the Bible say about idle time? Uh, Soldier Aaron, your hand was quick. Shalom, leadership. Uh, Shalom. Idleness uh, leads to sin. Oh, gosh. Uh, it's the book of Sirach. Okay. Uh, chapter 34. <laughs> I mean, 33 and verse 27. The book of Sirach. Chapter 33 and verse 27. Los Ayes, you read it, and Aaron, you break it down. Yes, sir. The book of Sirach, chapter 33 and verse 27. Come on. Send him to labor, that he be not idle. For idleness teacheth much evil. You see that idleness teaches much evil. Everybody from the least to the greatest. If you're alone, wicked thoughts are automatically going to come into your mind. You got to stay busy. Okay? You got to stay busy. Hey, if you've done a lot that day, make yourself go to sleep then. You understand what I'm saying? And you got to do that sometimes. He's like, oh, sh I'm just sleepy. I'm going to just make myself go to sleep. You understand? I worked. I studied. I went to camp. I did this. I did that. You think you need to go to sleep. Why you need to stay up late tonight for? You understand? No, you got to be, we got to discipline our minds. Deacon Laba bring this out all the time, man. And we just got to challenge ourselves, be to the point where, you know, sometimes when it comes to our various temptations and we know things are about to occur, you get kind of feeling like, man, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm scared to fall. All right, you're going to fall. If that's your mindset, you're going to fall into that iniquity because you actually want to do it. That's what you're telling yourselves. Like, I don't know. Well, if you don't know, I know for surety that you're going to fall. It's the way you approach things. How about this? Oh, this is just a test that God is putting in front of me to get me to the next level. Because I'm telling you, as you live and go through these trials and actually start passing your trials, the most High God, he'll get you to those next levels. But you'll never know. If you continue to fail time and time after again, you understand what I'm saying, right? So I'm telling, I encourage every last one of you. All right. I'm speaking to myself just like I'm speaking to you. It's time we knuckle up and fight and quit taking L's, man. I'm telling why Ezra's told us, he told us at the time when it was 10 and a half out of 12 to get yourself in order and reprove our people. Now we 12 out of 12. You understand? Now we got to, 
We got to focus like never before. Okay. Now let's go back. Let's go back. I realize we only got under an hour. All right. We got to finish this. Second Ezra's 14. We're at 14. Yes, sir. All right. Read that. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 14. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Come on. Cast away the burdens of man. There it is right there. Quit being weak. That's a mortal thought. I don't know if I can get over this. That's the flesh talking. That ain't spiritual. Okay, read. Cast away the burdens of man. Cast away the burdens of man. Uh, Brother James, bring out a hell of a scripture. Something simple, but it's heavy. Leviticus 19 and 17. Our people don't know how to get over that thing for the most part. It says cast that thing away. It's time to either apply the scriptures or die. That's the, that's the times we're living in. Read on. Put off now the weak nature. Put off the weak nature. The most I cannot deal with feeble-minded men. We read that early in James. The most I don't deal with double-minded men. Or someone, give me that James 1 and 6. I got to read it again. He don't deal with people who go to him and they're wavering. Meaning what? You know you go to God, but you really don't even believe what you're asking for. You just, I know I need to pray, but I kind of want to fulfill this lust. You understand? God ain't going to, he's not going to bless you like that. You got to make up in your mind what you're about to do. You got it? Yes, sir. Read it. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 6. Let, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. You see, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Read. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and, and tossed. Uh -huh. for, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. You won't receive anything of the Lord. If that's the type of spirit you're rolling with, you won't receive it. Let's go back to 2nd Ezra 14. The book of 2nd Ezra chapter 14 and verse 14. Come on. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of man. Uh -huh. Put off now the weak nature. Read. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Uh -huh. And haste thee to flee from these times. And haste. You know, we, we like to make haste to commit sin. But he's telling you, hey, do it quickly to get out of that situation that's going to lead you to sin. Just like our forefather Joseph. What did he do when Pharaoh's wife tried to sleep with him? He did what? He ran out of his clothes and got up out of there. That's how we got to be. We got to what? We got to read the scriptures of old, and that's how we're going to get our faith and our patience from the scriptures, from our examples of our forefathers. Uh, let's read on. Verse 16. Uh-huh. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. Right. That's a prophecy right there about what's to come. It says, for yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. Understand, brothers and sisters, what's happening right now, this is nothing. I'm telling you straight. What's happening right now in the earth, the civil unrest, just wait. Wait for it. But I'm going to tell you this. If we don't get ourselves right, that's even scarier. That's even scarier right there. It's one thing to see what's going on scripturally and you're prepared for it. But to see what's going on scripturally and not be prepared for it, man, you're going to have nightmares. That's scary right there. It's high time that we get over these simple, what, the moral laws, the civil laws, marriage. Bishops say it all the time. This is where we struggle. But Lord's will, this is motivation for us to get over it. Oh, I don't like the way he looked at me. Are you serious? I don't like the way he talked to me. Really? You see what I'm saying? That is just, that's foolishness. We got to get past that, brothers and sisters. All right? It's, it, the most I don't have time for it no more. You had something? Oh, okay. You read. My bad. Read on. You got some? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, give me um, uh, to go along with what Cap is bringing out. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 76. Where you going in that? All right. So start 75. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 75. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your guide. That the first step um, of having your trust and confidence is in God. You can't be afraid or uh, doubt yourself knowing that you need to use the most High God as your guide. Read. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, uh -huh. saith the Lord God. Let not your sins weigh you down. God says, don't let those sin weigh you down. Sometimes when you 
uh, feel like you down, you feel like you're draw, uh, dragging, your feet is dragging, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. One easy thing you could do is reach out. Reach out to someone that you know um, that can help you in that particular moment so you don't end up going and do things that you don't want to do. Wait. And let not your iniquities lift up themselves. The not giving, uh, uh, not giving, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, when you, uh, prov provision. provision for the flesh. Thank you. Not giving provision for the flesh. The things that you do to avoid anything that you know that might cause you to sin. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what God tells us to do. All praises. Let's go back to 2 Ezra 14. Let's finish this off. <clears throat> The book of Second Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 17. Uh -huh. For look how much the world shall be weaker through age. Uh -huh. So much the more increase upon them that dwell therein. So the Bible's telling us what's about to happen. Okay, read on. Verse 18. For the truth is fled far away uh -huh. and leasing is hard at hand. For now hasteth the vision to come which thou hast seen. Read. Then answered I before thee and said... Behold, Lord, I will go as thou hast commanded me and reprove the people which are present. But they that shall be born afterward, who shall admonish them. So it's talking about us. It's talking about the generations to come after him. All right. Because at this time, our law was burnt. OK, just like when you read in the um, what a Greek captivity it happened there, too. OK, hey, I'm just throwing it out there. OK, it happened during the time of Ezra's happened during the Greek captivity. Why do you think it's not going to happen again? You got to think about this stuff like that. Did you study enough to remember so it could be in your spirit? Because what if they take it away? What if they start taking you out your house or burning your Bibles? What then? Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to keep uh, Pentecost. I don't know how to keep Passover. I don't know how to keep Tabernacles. What are you going to do then? These are things that we don't think about on a daily basis because we're comfortable here in captivity. You understand? No, we can't be comfortable here, brothers and sisters. Remember, the scriptures say this is not our rest, right? Oh, man. We all right? Right? All right. I would hope so. You understand? So now you got to think differently. You got to think differently. What if what if they start closing down all of our schools? One school here. Boom. Another school here. I don't know if y'all know. When's the last time we congregated? So you see they can do that, right? So what are you going to do? That's that's. Now you got to start thinking, brothers. This is not, oh, I can't wait for the next CD. Oh, I can't wait to um, go here, travel. No, no, no. You got to start thinking like, okay, am I going to make it? That's where your mind's got to be, brothers and sisters. Okay? I'm never, y'all know how I get down. I ain't never going to sugarcoat it. I'm going to keep it real because that's my job. That's what I'm going to do. But it's up for you. You got to be focused. You got to walk in that thing. Now is not the time to be playing. Okay, let's continue. Verse 20. Behold, Lord, I will go as thou hast commanded me and reprove the people which are present. Uh -huh. But they that shall be born afterward, who shall admonish them? Read. Thus the world is set in darkness. Come on. And they that dwell therein are without light. Uh huh. So, and just to put that realization, go to Isaiah real quick. Um, Isaiah, the first chapter. Because a lot of y'all don't think it can happen. Y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. Remember, it say the righteous shall scarcely be saved. That's what the Bible says. Read um, verse 9. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 9. Watch this. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, uh -huh. we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Remember, I just said the world is in darkness. Brothers and sisters, you're not as strong as you think you are. I'm going to tell you straight up. If it wasn't for the little sanctuaries that the Most High God allowed us to have, you would be back in the world ASAP. Because some people cannot be by themselves. You go in quarantine, damn, you may fall out the damn truth. Okay? We need each other. And you got to be real with yourself. You know how strong you really are. Don't put yourself in those type of situations. Because we're trying to let you know, according to the scriptures, it's going to get worse. Okay? Let's go back to 2 Ezra 14. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 21. Uh -huh. For thy law is burnt. Therefore, no man knoweth the things that are done of thee. 
or the works that shall begin. So now it says, dang, nobody knows the history of our forefathers. Nobody knows how to keep the high holy days. All of this is gone. All right. So the most I put the spirit on Ezra to do this. Come on. Verse 22. Uh -huh. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost into me, and I shall write all that hath been done in the world since the beginning. You see that? So the most I put the spirit on Ezra to rewrite the Bible. Okay, you ever seen the book of Eli? Yeah, you seen that, right? At the end, what did he do? Yeah, he memorized it. Isaiah 8 and 16. Okay? Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. He had it right here. Okay, it was in him. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 16. Come on. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Do what? Seal the law among my disciples. Where is he going to seal it? In our mind, which is our hearts. Okay, one and the same. It's our souls. It's our spirit. Okay, go back to 2nd Ezra. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 22. Uh -huh. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost into me, and I shall write all that hath been done in the world since the beginning, uh -huh. which were written in thy law, that men may find thy path, and that they which will live in the latter days may live. Right. That's how we come to life. When you read the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, when he says, how shall these, bone live, these bones live? Right here, by the word of God. That's the only way we are living. Without the laws of God, we are dead, brothers and sisters. Give me Malachi 3.6. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. The book of Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. For I am the Lord. I change not. Uh -huh. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You got to understand that thing. You know what it means to be consumed? Anybody know what that means, Brother Malachi? Microphone, please. Anybody? Keep it in the front, please. Microphone. Go ahead. Shalom. Leadership. Shalom. Um, consumed means to be like devout. <laughs> yes, to be wiped away. I want, I'm still want to deal with you. Read it again. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. Watch this. For I am the Lord. I change not. See that? He says he changes not. Meaning what? Something had to occur for the Bible to be rewritten because he understood if the Bible was not rewritten, what would happen to us? We would be consumed. Now think about this. Check this out, Malachi. Throughout the scriptures, don't the Most High God repeat himself a lot? Yes, sir. And we still can't get it right, can we? Yes, no, just, just imagine us without the Bible, right? Read it again. Thank you. Verse 6. For I am the Lord. I change not. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. So we got to uh, have a better appreciation of the word of God. And don't take it lightly because we act like it's a, uh, it's a right. You understand what I'm saying? We act like we're spoiled brats. That's what, the, that's what the nation of Israel really is. We're a bunch of spoiled brats. We think, oh, man, I, I'm chosen. Well, okay. Well, not really. As Ezekiel 36, I, always, I like this scripture right here. Ezekiel chapter 36. Yeah, you chosen, but don't get it twisted. God doesn't need you, you know. Tell you what, Losias, I'll get, I'll get a better one. I like Deuteronomy 9 better. Mm. Give me Deuteronomy the ninth chapter. I like this one. Chapter 9 and verse 4. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 4. Speak not thou in thine heart. After that, the Lord thy God hath cast them out from before thee, uh -huh. saying, For my righteousness the Lord hath brought me into possess this land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord doth drive them out from before thee. Right, so just to start off right there, when you read the book of Leviticus, the 18th chapter, and I think 21 and verse 22, the Most High God, the reason why we got the land, because their wickedness was fulfilled. The original inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites and all those other African nations, they got kicked out because God was sick of their wickedness. So that's another, that's one thing right there. It's like, dang, okay, well, all praises. I'm glad the Most High chose me, but he kicked them out because of their wickedness. That's one. Read. Verse 5. Not for thy righteousness. It wasn't because we were righteous. You understand? Weren't, as soon as we got out of Egypt, weren't we complaining? Saying that Moses led us out here to die. You understand? Think about it. We're spoiled brats. We don't deserve repentance. We don't deserve redemption. But thank God he's given it to us. Read it again. Verse Not 5. 
Verse 5. Not for thy righteousness uh -huh. or for the uprightness of thine heart. Read. Dost thou go to possess their land? Uh huh. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Uh huh. And that he may perform the word which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now remember, Abraham, Abraham was on point. Is anything most I said to Abraham, didn't he do it? Yes. That's what the forefather did. Okay, give a shout out to the forefather. He was he was humble, he was meek, he did all of that. Whatever God told him to do, he did it immediately. But when it came to those children of Israel, my goodness, every time, didn't God have to kill, was it 40,000? He had to kill off in the wilderness? He put us to death many times. Why? Because of rebelliousness, because of sin. Romans 15 and 4 says it best. We're not going to go to it. The reason why we have to keep reading the scriptures over and over and over again because if he did it one time don't you think he'll do it again yeah i gotta hey we gotta meditate on these things brothers and sisters let's finish that in deuteronomy 9 verse 6 come on understand therefore that the lord thy god giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness so he said it again he just said it in four or five he said just to make it clear i'm not giving you this land because you like deserve it or anything he's saying that straight up Read. For thou art a stiff-necked people. Uh-huh. Remember and forget not how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness. Don't forget it for one second. Don't forget what happened in the wilderness for one second. Read. From the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until you came into this place. Uh-huh. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord. Now read Ezekiel 36, 19. Okay. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36 and verse 19. Uh-huh. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the through the countries according to their way. According to their what? According to their way. Their way was what? Their way was rebelliousness. Okay. Idolatry. All right, read on. And according to their doings, mm -hmm. I judged them. Read. And when they entered unto the heathen, whether they went. They profane my holy name. You see that? You see what we did until the until the most high God that delivered us from out of bondage? Read. When they said to them, These are the people of the Lord. They're like, whoa, these are God's people right here? Like it says in what Psalms 44 with a pointing of the finger, shaking of the head. Read. And are gone forth out of his land. Uh-huh. But I had pity for mine holy name. He had pity for Israel. I had pity pity for my holy name. He had pity for the son of Jacob. Pity for my holy name. He had pity for his name. You know why? Because he chose to place his name there. He chose to put his name on us. So he's like, dang, they're tearing up my name, man. Sheesh. They're making me look bad. He's the God of the heavens and the earth. These people are making me look horrible. But, hey, this is my name. I put my name on them, so... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it so my name looks good at the end of the day. Read. But I had pity for mine holy name, uh -huh. which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen. Come on. Whether they went. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sake. So don't ever get it twisted, brothers and sisters. God ain't doing this for us because we don't deserve it. Okay. Read. I do not this for your sakes, mm -hmm. O house of Israel. Come on. But for mine holy name's sake. Now, if we roll like that, we realize what? Dang. If that's the case, he's made trying to make his name look good. So if I go to the left or to the right, he could take me out at any time. That's how you got to be thinking. He only wants the best of Israel this time. He ain't taking all of us. This ain't like times before. You understand? When he deliver us and we profane. No, 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 no. This time he's taking one third of us. Okay, just because we in here, that don't mean we want third. That just means we in here. That's all it means. It's literally. Okay. Uh, is that it on that? No. Finish it off. I do not this for your sakes, Come O on. house of Israel, uh -huh. but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whether ye went. All right. Now, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 30. All right. Now, speed it up just a little bit. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 30, start at verse 5. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 30 and verse 5. Come on. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Uh -huh. As he now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. That's going into what? That's going into that pain. 
okay? That's going into uh, re, uh, being refined into pure gold, okay? That's going into changing. Read. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Read. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins Come on. as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. Read. Alas, for that day is great. So that none is like it. Uh -huh. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble. We're living in it right now. Read. But he shall be saved out of it. He shall be saved out of it. If, if he decides to do what? Do what? Keep the commandments. All right. And turn to God. All right. Give me second Ezra eight. Start at verse, verse one. The book of second Ezra chapter eight and verse one. And he answered Before me. you read that, Deuteronomy 4 and 30, and then 2nd Ezra 8 and 1. Because I asked the question, right? I said, um, uh, he'll deliver us if we do what? Keep the commandments, right? Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4 and verse 30. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee. Tribulation is trouble, okay? Read on. Even in the latter days. In where? In the latter days. Uh-huh. If thou turn to the Lord thy God. The stipulation is what? If, okay, if we decide to turn to the Lord, our God, read. And shall be obedient. Unto, and, and do what? Be obedient. Come on. Unto his voice. Unto whose voice? His voice. Come on. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. Now, check this out. A lot of people are going to say, they say, yeah, I listen to God, not man. All right, bet. So does God talk to anybody? Do y'all have a come? Do y'all, can y all, anybody call God? Do you have a cell phone number? So how does God speak to us? Do his what? Okay, so your Bible talks to you? Do his what? Do his prophets. Do his prophets. You got to say that. Because Jake will say that. I only listen to God. I don't listen to man. All right, all right, bet. So he talking, he talking to you. Okay. All right, all praises. All right, don't be simple. Understand that how you think you're going to get the judgment. Who is it going to come through? The prophets. That's how it's going to come. I'm telling you straight. All right, read that again for us. Verse 31. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, uh -huh. neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. So that's what it's going into when you read Jeremiah 30 and 7. You'll be saved out of it if you do what? Right. If you reach out to the father in your captivity, okay, and be obedient. To his commandments, okay? Now, 2nd Ezra 8. Halfway through. Speed it up. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 8 and verse 1. Come on. And he answered me, saying, The Most High hath made this world for many, uh -huh. but the world to come for few. I will tell thee. Read that part again. The, excuse me. The Most High hath made this world for many, uh -huh. but the world to come for few. But the world to come for few. You understand that, right? The kingdom ain't for everybody, okay? How many of the Israelites are going to get in, brothers? Who has that scripture? You guys, Zechariah 12 and um, 8. I mean, 13 and 8. All right, read it. The book of Zechariah, chapter 13 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Right, right, right. The third shall be left therein. All right, that's going into two-thirds of our people. They're going to be put to death. They're not going to make it. That's why it says, go back to 2 Ezra 8. 2 Ezra 8. Excuse me. 2 Ezra chapter 8 and verse 1. No, no. Where you? Yeah, yeah, read, read it. Read it. Read it. Verse 1. Come on. And he answered me, saying, The Most High hath made this world for many, uh -huh. but the world to come for few. Come on. I will tell thee a similitude. Ezra, as when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee that it giveth much mold whereof earthen vessels are made, mm -hmm. but little dust that gold cometh of. Even so is the course of this present world. Come on. There be many created, but few shall be saved. It says many created, but few shall be saved. So when you read Jeremiah 30 and 7, don't get it twisted. You can read that and say, oh, it don't matter. I'm Israel. I'm going to be saved. No, 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 no. It says few out of Israel is going to be saved. All right, now drop that, Matthew 24, and just go straight to 12. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 12. All right, watch this. 
And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, remember, we read that in what? Uh, Deuteronomy 31. It says we, uh, iniquity is going to get worse. Second Ezra 14, it said iniquity is going to get worse. Jeremiah 30, Deuteronomy 4, all of that. It says at the end times, it's going to get worse. Read it again. Verse 12. Uh -huh. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So in these latter days, we're going to see some treacherous acts. We're going to see lying. We're going to see betrayal. We're going to see all of that because, remember, if it wasn't for that remnant, it said all of us would be as Sodom and Gomorrah. It says we will all go back to the wickedness of the world. All right? So this is the reason why we're going over these classes is to get you spiritually prepared for what's to come. All right? So you're not looking crazy when these things actually break out. Okay? Read on. Verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end. The same shall be saved. Now, you can't just read over that. It says, he that shall endure unto the end. That's once again, that's going over your what? Your trials. Okay, that's going into your trials. Uh, Revelations 2, real quick. Revelations 2. It's an easy one right here. 2 and uh, 25. This is what it's talking about, enduring, right here. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 25. Mm -hmm. But that which ye have already hold fast till i come so that's going into what the word of god all right we what prophesy in part right we don't have the full understanding of the scriptures but we do know how to make it to the kingdom of heaven that's to keep the faith in christ and keep his commandments all right so what do we have right now keep that until he come read verse 26 uh-huh and he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end now that's the same thing as what endure unto the end the overcometh is what overcoming the trials and the tribulations along the way okay read verse 26 again and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end uh -huh. to him will i give power over the nation that's who's going to be reigning these are the people who that's the one third right there those are the few that's going to be saved those that can actually overcome the trials all the way up until you die or until messiah come okay from there, let's go back to Matthew 24 and 13. The book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 13. Uh-huh. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Was that 13? Did uh, you finish 13? Yes, sir. All right, drop that. Go to 2 Timothy 3. All right. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. All right, today's title or topic is Trials in the last days all right in order to pass or overcome or endure our trials we need to know what to look for okay all right second timothy 3 and verse 1 the book of second timothy chapter 3 and verse 1 come on this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come it says in the last days perilous times shall come come on for men shall be lovers of their own selves uh -huh. covetous boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful unholy this just let me see who's spiritual what else does disobedient to parents mean is it is it only talking about a child to the mother or father what else are I talking about uh simon uh, uh being um disrespectful to your uh spiritual uh, mothers and fathers are you your leaders right that's exactly what it's talking about it says uh, that the leader should be treated as what? The bishop is treat treated as his fathers, and the uh, mother Shamar be treated as your mother, spiritual mother. Okay, there's a ranking tier. There's a, a structure of leadership from the top all the way down to the bottom. All right, read that verse again. Verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, uh -huh. covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, Come on. unthankful, unholy, Without natural affection, mm -hmm. truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, excuse me, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Despisers of those that are good. All right. There's always going to be somebody. I'm going to just tell you, especially those who are new, there's going to be people among you who are not going to like you. All right, I'm going to say it again. There's going to be people even in this body that's not going to like you for trying to get yourself right. Because some people... What does uh, the old saying say? Uh, misery loves company. Some people want to be miserable and some people don't want to change. And if at one point y'all may have been close. Uh oh, officer want to say something. 
Oh, damn. All right, I'm going to just let you say it then. I ain't going to let you hurt yourself. Go ahead. No, all phrases. All phrases. No, that just reminded me of um, in the school that, at, uh, you know, some of the students in the school that repeat uh, grades. And one of their tactic is that they don't want to see other students that are coming in to pass them. So what they do, they try to, like, get those kids to be bad as uh, just like them to keep them back. Just exactly what Cap is saying. It's, it, even in our young children, they know to follow the same thing. So believe it or not, there will be spirit among you that have the same mindset. I'm not trying to get better. Therefore, I want you to be just like me. Keep me, uh, stay back with me. That's, the, uh, that's also called uh, the crab, crabs in a barrel mentality as well. All right, let's, uh, let's finish that off. What verse you at? I was at verse 3. No, verse 4. All right, read that. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 4. Come on. Traitors, heady, 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 high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Right, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Now, that sums up everything. What is, what is pleasurable, brothers? Sin is pleasurable, right? So it says you got to watch out for that because in the last days... These, that's called a reprobate. That means what? They went all the way back to their original sin. Uh, the dog returned unto his vomit. Okay? That says now they don't even care about following the commandments. All they want to do is please themselves. Okay? Read. Verse 5. Come on. Having a form of godliness. It says having a form of godliness. Read. But denying the power thereof. Hey, I'm going to tell you straight. All that means is this. They, kept, they come to the Sabbath, they have a form of godliness, but they don't believe that they could truly change. That's what that means. Read it again. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. They deny the power thereof because they're like, this is who I am. This is who I'm going to be. They don't want to actually buy in and believe the, the power in these scriptures. They deny the power of God. Read. From such Turn away. You see that? It says from such do what? Turn away. Turn away from these people because guess what's going to happen? If you don't turn away from them, what's going to happen to you? You're going to fall just like them. You're going to get bit. And then your spirit is going to decline, 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 and eventually you'll be gone or dead. One or the other. Okay? From there, drop that. Give me the book of um, Daniel 11. All right? We almost done. Got about like five scriptures <sighs> or seven. Okay, Daniel eleven thirty three, The book of Daniel, chapter 11 and verse 33. Remember, this is trials in the latter days. Trials in the latter days. Some of the things that you're going to see, brothers and sisters. Read what you got. The book of Daniel, chapter 11 and verse 33. Uh -huh. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. So the Bible says, they who uh, understand amongst the people shall instruct many. Read. Yet they shall fall by the sword uh -huh. and by the flame and by captivity. And by spo spoil many days. Jump down to verse 35. Verse 35. And some of them understanding shall. Read it again. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to. Let me, read, let me read this. It says, and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white. Brothers and sisters, you got to understand. All things work for the glory of the Father, for the good of those that love him. Understand that. So it says in these last days, you're going to see some men of understanding fall for two reasons. You'll see men of understanding fall to do what? To see if that's going to take you out, number one. Or is, are you going to realize, dang, if he can fall, I can fall. And now that's going to do what? That's going to purge you and make you white. You understand that? All right, read it again. Verse 35. And some of, the, some of them of understanding shall fall to try them. To do what? To try them. To be tried. That's called a trial. It's called a trial. Okay? Trials don't last forever, but they do last for some time. It's called a trial to try you to see what you're going to do. Read it again. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them. And to do what? To try them. And to purge. And to purge. What does it mean to purge? What does it mean to purge, Brother James? Go ahead, just stand up, say it. Yeah, yeah, to, to take out impurities. Purge out. Exactly, read. And to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, 
because it is yet for a time appointed. Understand that, brothers and sisters. All right, all of this, all these trials, tribulations, occurrences, is to see what you're going to do, whether you're going to keep God's commandments or no. All right, from there, give me Second Timothy chapter two. Okay, Second Timothy chapter no, 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 chapter three, chapter three. All right, because a lot of times, brothers and sisters, and y'all have seen it. If you've been with IUIC, if you've seen it, you'll see somebody that had status or rank. You'll see them fall, but then after that, let's just say they catch a demon, right? Then you'll see people follow after them because now, for some strange reason, what we teach and what we believe is no longer true, okay? Watch what the scripture says, 2 Timothy 3.14. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 14. Uh-huh. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. The Bible says continue in the things that you have learned. Read. And has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Read. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. That's what you got to remember, brothers and sisters. In 2 Timothy 3, it said... Those who deny the power of, thereof, who don't believe that you can actually change. All right, get away from them. But you should know better. Those who are sincere, you should know better. I want you to read verse 15 again. Watch this. Verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture. Come on. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Wise unto salvation means what? You're changing. You're getting purged. So when that day comes, you'll be one of the few that's going to be saved. Read. Make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Read. I'm oh. sorry. Drop that. Give me Daniel 12. All right. We almost done. I got five scriptures. Daniel 12. All right. We should be done in about 10 minutes. Daniel, the 12th chapter. And I want you to start at verse. Give me a sec. Start at verse 9. I want you to read 9 and 10. The book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. To the time of the end. So that's showing you, that's showing you what? Daniel, he's going to be back. When you read, uh, what's that, uh, First Ezra 1? Yeah, read that. Let's just read that real quick. We can fit that in there. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 1 and verse 35. Mm -hmm. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which not having heard of me, yet shall believe me. Read. To whom I have showed no signs, yet they shall do that I have commanded them. Right. That's us in captivity. Lord willing, that's us. Okay, read. Verse 36. Uh-huh. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance mm -hmm. and acknowledge them. I take to witness the grace of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. Read on. And now, brother, behold, what glory, and see the people that cometh from the east. Watch this. Unto whom I will give for leaders. For leaders. So this is going into these times. How do we know? In verse 35, it says, your houses will I give to a people that shall come. Those people that shall come are those in the latter days. Okay, now jump up to verse 39. Verse 39. Uh-huh. Unto whom I will give for leaders. Read. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Oseas, Amos, and Micaiah, Joel, Abidus, and Jonas, Nahum, and Akabat, Abekuk, Sophonias, Agias, Zechariah, and Malachi, which called also an angel of the Lord. All right, which is called also an angel of the Lord. So in the last days, these men, these prophets are going to be back on the earth. So Ness is like, what, what are you talking about? Yes. So you remember when the Most High God says, uh, reverence my priests? Remember that scripture? Read that one real quick. Sirach, you know what I want. Seven. Yeah, read that one. Yeah. The book of Sirach. Chapter 7 and verse 29. Fear the Lord with all thy soul and reverence his priest. There you go right there. Fear the Lord. Because guess what? You could be talking to what? Abraham. You could be talking to Daniel. You could be talking to Habakkuk. And you could literally be evil surmising against those men. And when the Most High in that day, he reveals who that is. Think about how you would feel. Think about all that whole time you were evil surmising against Moses. 
Think about how bad it would be if you evil surmise against Abraham, who was called a friend of God. That's not, it's your, that's not going to be good for you. You understand? That's why we got to do what? Love the brotherhood, fear the king, honor the, you know what I'm talking about. I'm butchering the scripture, but this is what we got to do. We got to be circumspect. We got to fear God, not man, fear God. And he telling you what to do while you're on earth. Okay, drop that. Let's go back to Daniel 12, 9 and 10. The book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 9. Come on. And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the t till the time of the end. Read. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. But it says the wise shall understand. The wise shall understand. Think about this. Christ used to do it all the time. He used to speak in parable form when it came to the Sadducees, Pharisees, and scribes. All right? He would speak a parable to them because he knew they wouldn't understand. They always wanted a what? A sign. What do we read Matthew 16? They're asking for a sign. He's like, you got to be kidding me. You can't see What's occurring now? I have to actually show you a physical sign. Then you go to what? Second Ezra 1 and 35. I'm going to deal with the people who don't need a sign, who are just going to do what I say out of sincerity. Okay? I want you to read verse 10 again. Daniel 12 and verse 10. Come on. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. And what? And tried. That's going into tribulation or your trials. Read. But the wicked shall do wickedly. Like it says, give me that in Revelation 22. Real quick. Because at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, the wicked going to be wicked and the righteous going to be righteous. All right. I'm going to just tell you straight. Like it says in um, Sirach 33 and 14, there's always two sides. There's a there's a righteous and there's a wicked. There's an evil and there's a good. You can't have one without the other until kingdom come. OK, read what you got. The book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 11. Uh -huh. He that is unjust. Let him be unjust still. You see that? It says, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Read. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. Mm -hmm. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Verse 12. That's it on that? Yes, sir. Let me hear 12. Verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man According as his work shall be. Right. According as his work shall be. Now let's go back to 10. Daniel 12 and 10. The book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 10. Come on. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Right. Because remember, the wicked, they deny the power thereof. They deny the power thereof, and from such turn away all right because they don't believe in the power of these scriptures all right to actually reverence the priests they don't believe that they can actually change from their wicked ways and in doing so they're just going to continue to be wicked okay but the wise shall understand the wise are those who actually remember what they're taught who actually apply god's commandments all right in that day they're going to be righteous still all right from there let's go to the book of sirach 27 Sirach 27. And give me verse 5. The book of Sirach, chapter 27 and verse 5. Watch this. The furnace proveth the potter's vessels, so the trial of man is in his reasoning. It says the furnace proveth the potter's vessel. Think about a potter, how he sculpts, well, he sculpts the clay or whatever work he has, and then he puts it in a furnace to do what? To bake it, to make it hard, and now you get this thing right here right read it again verse 5 the furnace proveth the potter's vessel so the trial of man is in his reason same thing with the trial of man all right if we want to be uh changed wise until salvation we also got to go through these trials man we also got to get proved just the same way as you get this end result that's what the most are doing with us right now okay because once again the most High, he tired of dealing with all israel because israel been wicked so he said, all right, this time, all right, this is the last one. I'm going to choose the best of the best, okay? And if they can get through this uh, refining process, all right, I'm going to go with them. But the rest of them, they're just going to be burnt with the rest of the chaff in the fire, okay? Um, from there, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 
First Peter chapter one. First Peter's one and start at verse. Start at um six. The book of First Peter, chapter one and verse six. Uh -huh. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be. Ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Through manifold. That's going into many temptations, brothers and sisters. All right? It's not just going to be one or two. Most are going to throw a lot of stuff at us, all right, to see if we are worthy of that salvation. Read. Verse 7. Come on. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold mm -hmm. that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, Come on. might be found unto praise and honor and glory. Exactly. You want that end result to be perfect. Man, that's a masterpiece right there. Okay, read. At the appearing of Jesus Christ. Read. Whom having not seen, ye love, and whom though now ye, ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You see that? It says, whom having not seen, meaning what? Show no signs. You understand? We just read that in 2nd Ezra 135, right? And it says, ye love, and whom though now ye see him not. Yet believing, ye rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Meaning what? When we hear the commandments, we're just going to do them. All right? We don't have to be like the old school of our, our ancestors who rebelled against God, complained, said we need to see signs. No, most I'm not dealing with them no more. Okay? But from there, let's go to 1 Peter 4. 1 Peter 4. All right, so we went through all of these scriptures today, all right, to make sure that you are what? Prepared for what's to come. So when these trials come your way, don't be surprised, okay? You should be equipped, you should be level-headed, and ready to overcome your trials, okay? Read what you got. Uh, which verse, Cap? Uh, 12, I'm sorry, 4 and 12. The book of First Peter, chapter 4 and verse 12. Watch this. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, uh -huh. as though some strange thing happened unto you. Don't act like, dang, why is this happening to me? Why my car caught on fire? Man, why did I get robbed? Dang, man, why, why is my wife treating me like this? Everything going bad for me. I lost my job. Don't act, don't act surprised, okay? Hey, it's going to happen to see how you react to it, all right? I'm telling you right now, man, things always happen. Sometimes relationships, relationships get messed up. Things may occur. It's always about your reaction, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, everybody going to look and see how you react to things. That's how you know who a man really is. I'm telling you. All right, something bad may happen. All right, but what now? What is this? Who is who really is this man? You won't know until adversity and trials come. That's when people's true character is going to come out, whether they're righteous or rather they're wicked. Okay, drop that. Last um, last two scriptures. Give me Lamentations three and twenty two. Tell you what, let's do this. Give me Job nineteen and fourteen. We'll end it like this. Yeah, Job chapter 19, verse 14. And I want you to read down to 25. The book of Job, chapter 19 and verse 14. Come on. My kinsfolk have failed, and my familiar friends have forgot me. So, brothers and sisters, all right, we got to get to the point where we're not worried about who's on our side anymore. Okay, now it's time to knuckle up and fight, no matter if you got to stand out there by yourself. A lot of brothers and sisters are scared to stand for the Lord by themselves. But Job wasn't, man. Everybody turned on Job, but he stayed firm. Okay? Read this again. Verse 14. My kinsfolk have failed. Come on. And my familiar friends have forgotten me. Read on. They that dwell in mine house and my maids count me for a stranger. Uh-huh. I am an alien in their sight. Read. I called my servant, and he gave me no answer. Uh-huh. I entreated him with my mouth. But when everything was good, they was like, yes, I'll help you. Yeah, I'll be there because Job was very rich. All right, but this is when he lost all his possession. Now he was sickly. The most I was jacking him up. Allowed him to be jacked up. Read on. Verse 17. Come on. My breath is strange to my wife, though I entreat it for the children's sake of my own body. Read. Yea, young children despise me. Mm -hmm. I arose, and they spake against me. Watch this. All my inward friends abhorred me. So everybody turned their back on Job. I'm telling you, once you start keeping God's commandments, you'll see the same thing. It ain't going to be all cool like how it was in the world. The people that you love the most, those are the people that's going to hurt you the hardest. Read. Verse 19. 
All my inward friends abhorred me, and they whom I love are turned against me. You see that? Those whom he loved are turned against him. Read on. Verse 20. My bone cleaveth to my skin and to my flesh, and I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Read. Have pity upon me. Have pity upon me, O ye my friends. For the hand of God have touched me. Come on. Why do ye persecute me as God and are not satisfied with my flesh? Read. Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book, that they were graven with an iron pen and led in the, ro the rock forever. All right, stop. So Job is, he's going through it. All right. So in Job 19, he's going through how the Most High God touched him. Now it's his trial. All right, brothers and sisters, you may, like I said in the morning class today, but you could be in this truth for three, four, five, six, seven years or whatever and not be touched. And then, boom, you get touched. And now you're like, damn, I can't believe what's going on to me. You're going on with me or what happened to me, whatever it may be. That is not the time to forsake God. That's the time to what? Baruch 4 and 28, seek him 10 times harder. Seek him like you never sought him before. All right, because that's going to show your true character. That's going to show who you truly are. Read verse 25. Verse 25. For I know that my re Redeemer liveth. So Job saying through all of this, even though he's being treated horribly, the most is afflicting him. He says this. Read it again. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. Come on. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. You see that? At the latter day upon the earth. Who is he prophesying about? Jesus the Christ. He's saying that his redeemer in these last days is going to stand upon the earth. Come on. Verse 26. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. So he's showing you in, um, once Christ comes back, he understands the dead in Christ shall rise. He's saying, yeah, even though I die, I'm still going to be caught up. He understands that as long as what he gets through that trial and endures, he knows there's something to look forward to. Read. Verse 27. Whom I shall see for myself, uh -huh. and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed with me. All right, so we got to be like the forefather Joel. We can't let any situation get us off track. We have to understand why we're here and why we're doing it. All right, and with that, that's uh, to, to the end of today's class. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.